If you like this video, please go ahead and consider hitting that like button. Subscribe if you have not already. And please, by all means, share this video. Hey everybody, welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at combined counties. But before that, this video is brought to you by Chris Miller and Alfredo. Thank you for being farm barons. So the combined counties map can be found over at the farmingsimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release and likely the entirety of its release, this map is available for PC players only. Now that's because as the description says right here in the second line, this is a 4X map. In fact, this is a very unique 4X map. And the fact that it takes four standard size maps, literally Riverview, Maypole, Ebony Island, and Glen Lethen, all four by Cavalier Roy, and combines them into a singular 4X map, again, by Cavalier Roy. Let me go ahead and read you the description. Welcome to Combined Counties. This is a 4X map, which brings Riverview, Maypole, Ebony Island, and Glen Lethen all into one map with a few changes as possible to any other maps to keep the original feeling while also allowing you to drive across the whole map. The map also has four BGAs that are set up where you buy the BGA. The land is also given to you. However, this opens up the option if you wish to cut a light that then removes all the hedges for the particular map the BGA is located on. And we will be demonstrating this feature in the video. This map includes 493 fields, 255 viable plots, 22 farmyards, all fully functional, and the buildings can all be fully removed. There are four BGAs. Alien Jim's cuttable hedges are in use, multiple plots for forestry around a map, five empty plots to build whatever you wish, four of every base game production spread around the map, multiple cell points also spread around the map, Animal pens that have large capacities for animals and food. New textures for multiple crops. This map is precision farming ready with a custom soil map. This map is using the Sturge Simulations UK calendar, modified production chains, and there are 100 collectibles spread across the entirety of the map. Now let's go ahead and load on in and talk about how this map performs. Now we will be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, Animal Food Overview, Field Lease, Food Calculator, Precision Farming, and Straw Harvest. I will tell you, if you load this map up in Farm Manager Mode or Start From Scratch, you will find that all the farms are built out exactly how you're going to see them here in New Farm Mode. With the exception, you do not have any land, nor do you have any starting machinery at the main starting farm. Now, if you happen to have a lower powered system, I do want to tell you that when I was testing this map on my low powered system, which is basically using AMD integrated graphics and my custom low end system graphics settings for farming simulator, that I was able to achieve highs of steady 60 frames per second in a large portion of this map. But there were select areas like where we load in at the shop where I was seeing frame rates as low as the upper 40s. And I will tell you that probably as you explore this map and see it in this video, to think that everything that you see in this video and on a low end system with integrated AMD graphics, we're still seeing frame rates in the upper 40s at the worst, not sustained throughout the entirety of the map, just upper 40s at the worst, but sustained 60 FPS through a large portion of this map is absolutely incredible. Let's go ahead and take a look at that PDA. And I think at this point, the scale of this project is really going to come into picture because this isn't just a 4X map. This, this is literally four standard maps, exactly how they were released, stitched together, such that now we basically have four standard maps in our 4X play area. And as a result, we have four times the stuff. Most oftentimes, a 4X map is simply things scaled up. We still have four or five farms, typically. Lots of fields, but the fields are typically bigger. Here we have a massive, massive number of fields. The maximum number of viable farmlands. 22 farms. 
55 productions, four BGAs, one per map. We do have a single shop strategically placed right here in the middle between all four maps and a single animal dealer not too far from the middle. Now, we do have all our standard crops available to us in FS22 available on this map, including our red beets, carrots, and parsnips. If we go ahead and take a look at our farmland screen, you'll see we start by owning farmland ID 214. We can buy this in any alternate game mode for $428,000. Farmland 214 is our main starting farm, and it is going to have cows, sheep, and chickens. Now, as far as other farms and other points of interest on this map, at Farmland ID 85, we have a building site that can be bought for $52,667. At Farmland ID 133, we have a farm that has horses, sheep, cows, chickens, and pigs. Sorry, I'm trying to reference my notes here. We do have a biogas plant located right here. It is only going to be available once we purchase the land. The next farm we have is Farmland ID 239, which is going to have sheep and chickens. It can be bought for $558,000. Farmland ID 251, which can be bought for $991,000, is going to have pigs and chickens. Farmland ID 204 which can be bought for $767,000. Well, it's going to have chickens and cows. Farmland ID 103 is a building site for $53,000. In addition, between Farmland ID 204 and 208, we also have our second biogas plant. We then have Farmland ID 220, which is going to have cows, horses, and chickens. Farmland ID 211, which is going to be an arable farm. Farmland ID 228, which is going to be viable for $367,000. And 228 is going to have chickens and cows. Farmland ID 179, which is going to be viable for $1.3 million. And that's going to have cows, horses, chickens, and pigs. Our third biogas plant is going to be directly below Farmland ID 199. And then our next farm is going to be Farmland ID 176. That can be bought for $907,000. And that is going to have sheep, cows, and chickens. Farmland ID 125 is going to have horse, sheep, pig, cows, and chickens. That's going to be buy up for $928,000. We then have Farmland ID 3 just to the north. That is going to be one point or one million dollars, sixty-two thousand to buy. And Farmland ID three is going to have cows and sheep. We then have Farmland ID one forty-six, a little bit further north yet, for six hundred and ninety-six thousand dollars. And that's going to have horse, chicken, sheep, and cows. Then we have Farmland ID one forty, which is another buildable site for thirty-two thousand dollars. Farmland ID ninety-nine, okay, which is going to be Pigs, sheep, and horses, $912,000. Farmland ID 123, which is going to have sheep, cow, chicken, pigs, and horses, $743,000. Farmland ID 15, which is going to be chicken, cows, horses, and sheep, $462,000. Farmland ID 55, which is going to be sheep, Chicken and horses that can be viable for one hundred ninety nine thousand dollars. Farmland ID thirty four, which is going to be cows and pigs. We have a sole farmhouse here at Farmland ID sixty seven that can be bought for seven hundred and one thousand dollars. We have another buildable site at Farmland ID one eighty nine that can be bought for one hundred and seven thousand dollars. We have a farm. Over at Farmland ID 21 for $839,000. That is going to have cows and chickens. And then at Farmland ID 111, we're going to have sheep. And that can be bought for $378,891. That is 
that was a rundown of basically all of the farms and buildable areas on this map, on this collection of maps that have since forth been combined into a single map. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at our farmland lease screen. And this is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any fields, what fields are included, then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost? At any point in time, you can pause the video to get a closer look at any one of these particular farmlands. There are going to be a huge number of these. Like I said, we have the maximum number of viable farmlands available to us on this map that the game engine is going to allow. And that is going to be 255. We can then go and cross-reference that with our field calculator screen, which is going to have an even huger list of fields. This is going to be the specific sizes of each particular field. And I believe that there are 512 fields, if I am remembering, from our intro. And again, you can pause at any point in time if you want to see how large any one of these particular fields is going to be. Since this map is simply taking four standard maps and combining them together, we have fields of significantly varied size from, as you can see, less than one hectare, or sometimes less than a half of a hectare, all the way up to probably 10 or 15 hectares in size as far as the biggest fields go. So quite the variety. And I think this would be an excellent multiplayer map where you can just max out on the number of players and max out on the number of farms in use and really get an interesting sense of of size and space now this map is making use of a custom soil map so let's go and see how that is being applied to these fields and quite the soil map it is indeed i like how we have pretty distinctive soil types so for example the map that is ultimately in the northwest quadrant we have quite a variety of silty clay loam and sandy loam with a little bit of loamy sand mixed in. To the east of that in our northeast quadrant, well, now we have a significant mix of loam, sandy loam, and just a little bit of loamy sand and silty clay mixed in. To the southeast quadrant, well, we have this kind of Y shape of silty clay. And then around that, we have splotches of sandy loam and loamy sand. And then to the southwest quadrant, we have more of kind of a random splattering. But really, the majority of the map is going to be a mix of loam and sandy loam. This map is making use of a custom crop counter, and we can see that listed here. We take a look down through a prices screen. We have a multitude of sell points, as one might expect, given the fact that we have basically four maps combined, and each map itself had a multitude of sell points for all of our standard basing crops, as well as our animal outputs of eggs, wool, and milk, and our silage, hay, straw, and grass. With respect to our base game productions, we do indeed have the ability to once again sell to a plethora of sell points for all of these productions. Now, something of interest is that we have multiple places to sell lime, but we don't have any bulk lime buying areas. We do have also multiple places to get rid of our stones if you are playing with stones enabled. Now, as far as additional productions available on this map, we have broche, cookies, dough, yeast, pasteurized milk, pizza, sandwiches, soybean oil, pancakes, donuts, soy milk, waffles, and yogurt. We do have multiple places to sell our washed root crops. So if we are playing with the farm production pack, we have the ability to use those. And we also have the ability to sell all of our platinum and premium expansion production items. So that is always a good thing to see. If you are playing with pumps and hoses, we do have the ability of getting rid of our separated manure. And if you are playing with straw harvest, we also have the ability of getting rid of our hay and straw pellets. With respect to our starting fleet, we start out with a lot of starting machinery. It is all owned. None of it is leased. It all has a fairly good number of operating hours on it. 
and certain things are going to range from very well maintained to maybe a little bit suspect with respect to its maintenance and as a result its resale value is a little low at the main starting farm we have three animals as i mentioned cow chickens and sheep looking at my notes i counted a total of 61 animal pins on this map scattered across those 22 farm areas 61 so if you do have the idea that you are going to want to put down more animal areas you're going to run up to a pretty big limit pretty quick even with the more animal areas mod for pc players enabled i believe that only takes the limit up to 64. so you can put down three more until now you're up to that hard limit now do note all these farms are totally customizable so you could buy farms just for the sake of leveling everything and clearing things out so you can then further expand animals at the farms that you do wish to use. This map does have contracts available. And given the fact that we have four times the normal, uh, air quote, normal field number, you should have a substantial number of contracts coming up throughout the year. We do not own any of the 55 production chains that are pre-placed on this map. And this map is making use of the 100 Elm Creek collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. In new farmer mode, we start with the John Deere 6250R, Massey Ferguson 8S305, and the Valtra Q305. We have the New Holland Genesis T8 large tractor. We've got the T560 harvester, and that is going to be paired up with the 625X grain header and the Nardi N40BX header trailer. We have the Crone Big M450 self propelled mower, as well as the Kloss Torion 1941 wheel loader. We have our 2017 pickup truck, as well as the ASW 271 trailer. We have the Scorpio 550 stone picker, the Speed Max 560 mulcher, the POV5 XL plow, the Terrasim C6F cedar. We have the Power Roll 1230 HD Dalbo roller. We have the Hardy Mega 1200L sprayer and front splay tank. That's going to be for liquid fertilizer and herbicide. For our solid fertilizer and lime, we have the Breedall K105 fertilized spreader. And for solid fertilizer only, we have the ZATS 3200 sprayer or spreader. We also have for our grass care. Now, this roller is going to be exclusively for grass. The Maxi Roll 630 Green Line. We have the HIT 1618T Tether. We have the Z2840H Semez Windrower. We have a Rapid 580B Forage Wagon. For our tractors, we have the Q6M Front Loader Arms. And for the Front Loader Arms, we have a Bale Spike. For our Wheel Loader, we have the Silage Fork. We have a Low Loader in the Transport Wagon TP500S. And for our front weights, we have a 1,000 kilogram and 750 kilogram front weight. As far as mods and DLCs that are included with the map, there are none. And at this point, I want to go and take a look at our production overview. So depending on if you have the premium or platinum expansion enabled, you will or will not see some of these productions because they are tied to paid DLCs. I have all of these DLCs activated, so therefore this is what you can expect to see if you do own and have activated the premium and platinum expansion as well. This map includes three potato processors, so we're gonna be able to make potato chips from potatoes and sunflower oil, canola oil, or olive oil. We also have our soup factory that is going to take carrots, parsnips, red beets, and potatoes and make our various soups. We have the Maypole BGA. It's going to take our silage, slurry, manure, should be cut, straw, potatoes, and wood chips and process that into energy, methane, and digestate. We have the Maypole sawmill, which is going to take logs and make planks and wood chips. We have the Maypole spinnery, which is going to take wool and cotton, make our fabric. And our maple oil plant, which is going to take sunflowers, canola, olives, and soybeans and make various oils out of those. We have the maple carpenter for furniture and wood chips. 
our maypole grain mill, which is going to take wheat, barley, oats, sorghum, corn, soybean, and canola, and make flour out of that. The maypole raisin factory is going to take grapes and make raisins and grape juice. Our maypole bakery, well, they're going to take sunflower, dough, yeast, flour, sugar, pasteurized milk, eggs, butter, strawberries, oil, olive oil, canola, soy milk, honey, chocolate, bread, cheese, tomatoes, lettuce, and water. And with those inputs, well, they're going to make a variety of outputs in bread, cake, waffles, pancake, donuts, sandwiches, pizza, dough, cookies, and broche. Maypole Dairy is going to be able to make cheese, butter, pasteurized milk, chocolate, yogurt, and soy milk by incorporating milk, water, pasteurized milk, yeast, sugar, strawberries, and soybeans. We have the Maypole Tailor, which is going to take fabric and make clothing, and the Maypole Sugar Mill, which is going to be a fairly standard process, but is also going to output yeast. We have our Cereal Factory, pretty standard recipe there. Riverview BGA, and they're going to take silage, slurry, manure, sugar beet cut, sugar beet, straw potatoes, and wood chips, and make again energy methane and digestate. We have the Riverview Spinnery, fairly standard there. And then we have the Bakery. That is going to make the same set of products as what we saw with respect to our Maypole Bakery, but now over in the Riverview section of the map. We have the Riverview Carpenter, Riverview Cereal Factory, and the Riverview Raisin Factory. Our Riverview Dairy is pretty much the same, as well as the Riverview Tailor Shop and the Riverview Sugar Mill, which is also going to produce yeast. We have the Riverview Grain Mill and Oil Plant. And then we have our sawmill. All are pretty standard compared to what we saw on the other section of the map. And then we have Riverview Farm Productions. There are three sets of this farm productions on the map. Overall, there are four of everything other than there's three potato processors, there's one soup factory, and three farm productions. Farm Productions is going to take digestate, slurry, methane, water, Manure, wheat, herbicide, stone, snow, canola, corn, sugar beet cut, lime, sugar beet, canola oil, sunflower oil, grass, hay, chaff, silage straw, mineral feed, barley, and sunflowers. And it's going to output liquid fertilizer, solid fertilizer, herbicide, seed, lime, water, slurry, mineral feed, silage additive, sugar beet cut, diesel, hay, silage with hay, silage with Grass, silage with chaff. We have TMR, pig food, slurry, and manure. We have the Glen, Glen, Glen Lethen, sorry. We have the Glen Lethen oil plant, the Glen Lethen carpenter, and grain mill, as well as the Terriel, Taylor cereal and dairy, all fairly standard from what we've seen with the other maps. Glenleithan Bakery, Raisin Factory, Sugar Mill, Spinnery, and then the Glenleithan Farm Productions. And the Glenleithan BGA as well. Then we have its sawmill, planks and wood chips. And then we have the Ebony Island Biogas Plant. Then we have the Ebony Island Dairy, Sugar Mill, Cereal Factory, Taylor Carpenter, Sawmill, Oil Mill, Spinnery, Raisin Factory, Bakery, Grain Mill, and its Farm Production Pack. Now let's get a little bit of altitude and, well, let's just, just see what we've got going on here. At this view, we can see our starting farm right there, centered on the screen. And that is going to be Ebony Island. Ebony Island is going to have the smallest fields on the map. This is going to be Riverview. And then we have Maypole. And then finally, we have Glen Lethen. So here we have our starting farm. And we're just going to do the aerial tour, I think, first. And then we'll jump around 
to the individual farms for the end because I think that's going to take the biggest hunk of this video and folks may or may not really wish to hang around for that. So we're here on Ebony Island. We have another one of our farms. We're just kind of swing on the exterior. We've got our grocery buy point. We do have a fuel station here. We're going to find some productions along the edge of the map here, like our dairy. Now, this map has several cool little tricks. We've got our arable farm I mentioned here within the forest. And one of those cool little tricks is the ability to get rid of these hedges. So these hedges are cuttable hedges. And just like the alien gym cuttable hedges, because they are basically just that, we can come up here with our chainsaw. And I really need to go back to a piece of land that I own to demonstrate this. But we're going to come up here to a chainsaw and we're going to cut down this pole and a section of this hedge is going to go away. Well, that could be monotonous if you want to cut down a lot of hedges. So what this map also has is the feature to cut down all the hedges on any one of the maps by finding a specific thing at the biogas plant. So at each biogas plant, we are going to find one particular thing. And it's going to be somewhere around here. And we just need to find it. And once we find it, we're going to know that if we cut this down, all the hedges on this map, this quadrant of this map, will vanish. So if you want to have a completely hedge-free Ebony Island, cut this light pole down. Now it looks concrete, but it will turn into a tree when you cut it down. We have our spinnery. We have our grape processor here. Our bakery. And there's that buildable site that I mentioned. Another farm located over here. Our grain mill. Our tailor. And just for a point of reference, I did enable fast flight. So we are moving at eight times our normal speed. That's why we're able to move around here about the same speed we would typically do on a standard map. So here's another farm for cereal factory. It's going to be our potato processor from the premium expansion. Our sugar mill. And that is pretty much going to be this map because a lot of this interior here is going to be focused on fields. Let's look over here to Riverview. And something else that I think Cavalier Roy has done an excellent job with is the seamless integration between these maps. So we're really flowing from one map to another fairly seamlessly. And to some degree, as you can see here, each map is at a different elevation. So Riverview, the perimeter of Riverview is below Maypole and Glen Lethen. The level of Ebony Island is below those as well. So we have to go up and we do that here in the forest. We're going to find our road that takes us straight up and then right here to our vehicle dealer, which is pretty much at the point that all four of these maps intersect we map we also have a small grape in olive area located right here I believe i skipped over that 
when I was talking about the various farmlands. And that's going to be farmland ID 65, viable for $23,000. Got our sugar mill over here. One of our farms tucked away. We're a grape processor. We have another farm located around the other side of this ridge line. The BGA. And again, I mentioned, if you find that pole, that light, there's one at each biogas plant area, it will get rid of the hedges at all of the fields for that particular map. We have our grain mill. Our sawmill is coming up here, buried down in the woods. Now a little interesting bit of fact about this map. This was the first Cavalier Roy map that I was introduced to way back in FS17. And when I found this map, it wasn't named Riverview. It was named something completely different. In fact, it was named Newbie Farm. And being a fairly new person to farm sim, being FS17 was my initial farm sim, I was like, oh, it's, that's the newbie. That's, that's for me. I'm a newbie. No, no, that's wrong. That was, that was, that was a joke. That was a practical joke because Newbie Farm is not for newbies. Newbie Farm at the time was a very difficult map because of the fact that it was realistic prices. You got next to nothing when you sold your grain, which meant it was nearly impossible to make any real money with any real speed. So this map really was an ultimate grind fest with respect to gameplay. So a little bit of fun. That is kind of where Cavalier Roy is with things. He can be a little bit of a joker from time to time. Now something else that's pretty neat is up here at each farm, we're also going to find our pillar. And if we sell or cut down, I should say, this light pole, well, Certain things that we couldn't sell at the farm will vanish. So everything at all of these farms are completely and totally customizable. You can sell and get rid of everything at all of these farms. Or you can cut down a pole and it will vanish. So it's one or the other. Got some sell points here on this little island. So you got to be careful as far as the size of the machinery and trailers that you bring into some of these areas. We have another fuel point. We have our dairy. We have our cereal factory here. We have the Hope the Rune Castle up here on top. We have our oil mill. And now let's make our way up here to Maypole. And up on the Maypole farm, we have another farm located right here. Farmer's Market Sell Point. We have our shop located right there for frame of reference. We have our bakery. We have our animal dealer. And this is also a fun little trick. Trickster. You sit. Kevin Roy is a trickster. We've got a nice little little pond here, a little island in the middle. And why, oh why, is this light pole here? Remember what I said, if you find this light pole, cutting it down will do interesting things. If you cut this light pole down, uh, the pond drains and becomes just an empty hole. So you can buy this land, cut this pole, get rid of the lake, and flatten it out, and there you go. You got yourself another field or another farm building area. Completely and totally customizable. Across Maypole Farm, we have our sawmill. We have that building site that I mentioned earlier. We have our flour mill, our 
or oil or cereal processor. Spinnery, another farm. And these are not small farms, right? This will be quite a unique gameplay experience, in my opinion. We have our dairy, we have our carpentry shop. We have another grocery. Yet yeah, another farm here. Another farm off in the distance. The biogas plant. Another large building site up here to the north. We have our oil production. As I mentioned, the farmhouse, which I believe is tied to this farm right here. It's going to be an arable farm. We have another farm there. And now we're coming back down to where we've already been. And at this point, we'll make our way down the western edge of the map to the fourth map on this singular map in Glen, Glen Lethen. And this road is going to basically connect us between those two maps right around, right around this point right here would be where I would say where those maps are going to cross. And now we're into our fourth, our fourth map. So we have another carpentry below. Another one of our farms, grocery, another potato processor. We have our grape, we have our tailor, we have fuel, we have dairy. We have another farm over here to the west, southwest. We have our sawmill buried back here in the woods. And we now down around the southern part of this map. We have yet another farm. We have our spinnery. Our sugar mill. And our cereal factory and oil mill. And we can see Ebony Island. We have yet another farm. Farmer's Market. We have our biogas plant for Glen Lethen. That was the sawmill for Ebony Island. And we're basically back to where we started at the vehicle shop so what do you all think of this i think this is a really cool concept and it'd be interesting to see more map makers take this approach now of course kevlar roy has done basically just exclusively uk themed maps and therefore it's a little bit easier to maybe combine maps into one because they all share the same really common theme and fairly common locale but it would be interesting to see other map makers who do other things fairly really common location based to blend them together and release four different maps and then release a combined mega map if you will combining all of them together especially if in fs25 we're going to be able to get 4x maps on console now, before we dive into the specific farm tours around the map, I did want to pull the PDA up again. I've gone ahead now and bought all of the farmlands. And as you can see now, the PDA has gotten a whole lot busier with all of these hotspots for the silos, the fuel tanks, the animal pens, and the farmhouses.
We're going to start here at 214 and kind of work our way around in a kind of counterclockwise direction. And I plan on ending up over here somewhere around farmland ID 138. So over in this general vicinity is where I plan to finalize. So this is going to be our starting farm. We just kind of came up here, came up the lane with the flyover portion of the video. As I mentioned, we have cuttable hedges. Let me go ahead and pick up a chainsaw and we'll just demonstrate that. We're gonna walk in here, we're gonna get our green circle. There we go, and now we've cleared away a section of this hedge. We've got our used machinery here, nice storage shed. This is going to be a farm productions, the Ebony Island farm productions. So we have our dump point. We have a fill point here for liquids. We have an output pipe. We do have fuel storage, as well as our front weights positioned right here. Now all these animal areas are going to be modified to hold a lot of animals. So this one let me set up for a thousand. I don't know if they're all set up for a thousand or if it's going to be a combination of 500 and a thousand, but it's going to be a whole lot. So we have our milk. And for the most part, these are all going to be modified base game animal pens or food and straw. And our slurry point. We do have bale and pallet storage as well for 500. Our wheel loader. Tractors. We have then a pull through stylage bunker. We have our base scheme silo here. So our dump and fill point. We have a mineral feed and seed silo. Here we have our sheep area for 2,000 sheep. For our food, and we have our wool point. Here we're gonna have solid fertilizer storage. Then we have our chicken coop, so we have our egg spawn point. We have liquid fertilizer storage there. 2,000 chickens. And we have a dump point. And then we have our farmhouse. That is going to be the main starting farm. So we're here to the next farm. And here we are, farmland ID 228. And then here 228, well, we're gonna have some more machine storage. Bale and pallet storage, another 500 bales and pallets. Thousand cow cow pasture with our milk fill point, our food, and our water. Oh, look at there. I'll leave you to find the other 99. We've got liquid fertilizer storage. We have our farm silo. Seed and mineral feed storage. We have a liquid tanker and our fuel tank. Some nice storage sheds, farmhouse, and our pull through bunker. Next farm is going to be located over here. 
edge of the island. I would say you're going to be working with small to medium sized machinery. Definitely machinery that is going to fold up well. Unless, again, you go and cut down all the hedges by using that pole at the various biogas plants. We've got liquid storage here, or that's solid storage. We have our liquid storage, seed and mineral feed. We have our fuel, farm silo. One thousand chickens. So we're egg in our food. We have our sheep. So we have our wool, our food. Two thousand sheep. And we have our farmhouse. Making our way south of it. We're going to come up to the next farm. Once again, we have some nice storage sheds. We're going to have a bale and pallet storage here. We have our chicken pasture. A thousand chickens again. Eggs, food. We have our farmhouse. So we have our solid tanker. We have our liquid tanker over there in the distance. Bale and pallet storage. Here we have our pig pasture. Thousand pigs. Food, water. Slurry is hidden away here. I guess we don't have slurry, sorry. We don't have slurry because there's no shit. We're just gonna do their business in the ground and it's just going to vanish. We have our fuel trailer in our fuel tank, sorry, in our seed and mineral feed. We have the BGA and let me demonstrate to you what I mean by cutting this down and getting rid of these hedges. It's a little different, different now, doesn't it? Right? Totally different. Now, much more wide open, you're going to be able to merge a lot of these fields together as a result of just quickly getting rid of those edges. So we're coming in here, we have another farm. Just kind of tucked away in here between the BGA and our oil mill. We have our 500 bale in pallet storage shed. Pull through bunker, we have our silo, we have our fuel tanker, seed and mineral feed. Well now, now we have a cow pasture that's just open. Free roaming cow pasture because we cut all the hedges down. At any rate, you're gonna have your milk trigger, your food, your water, your solid fertilizer, your liquids. Your chickens, thousand chickens here, eggs and food, and there you go. So we have that buildable site. And there's going to be an arable farm tucked back here in the woods. On the farm with a sign, it's a Bly Things farm. Their liquid tanker, fuel tanker, solid fertilizer, seed and mineral feed, farmhouse, and our silo. Just to the east of that farm, we have yet another one. So 
So again, since we cut down our hedges, so these look a little funny, but we now have 16 horses here, food and water. Our farmhouse, we have a pull through bunker. Nice machine shed. We have our chickens. For the thousand chickens. Food, water, eggs. We have our silo. Solid fertilizer, our mineral feed, fuel. And our thousand cows. Is that farm? I believe that's going to cover us for Ebony Island. We already talked about this one, right? Should have. Maybe we didn't. Yeah, we did. There's our cow. There's our moo cow. All right. So making our way over to Glen Lethan. We have our first farm. Now, I like how a lot of these farmlands, as you can see from the PDA, a lot of these farmlands include fields when you buy them. So you're getting a lot more for your money than simply the buildings. Bale and pallet storage. We have our pig slurry point. We have our diesel. We have our solid fertilizer. We have our cows. Another 2,000 cows here. We have our milk point. There's going to be a feeding robot system, so we have our food and straw if we wish to do it manually. A slurry point. But if we wish to use the robot, well, then we have those inputs there. We have another 16 horses here with our food and water. We have liquid storage. We have our farm silo, our farmhouse, our manure heap, our food. We have our pig point here for 2,000 pigs. And there you have that farm. We have our next farm. We have a three-sided silage bunker. We have our farmhouse to our right. We have chickens to our left here. Another 1,000 chickens. Mineral feed, storage silo, we have our diesel tank. We have another cow feeding barn, so we have our slurry. Liquid tank, we have 500 bale and pound storage. We have our manure heap, we have another 2,000 cows. And our milk point. And we have our wool, so we have our sheep here, we have our full food, and then our drop off 2,000 black sheep. We make our way directly to the west. We have another farm down this long lane. To the right, we have our farmhouse. We have our liquid tanker. We have our solid tanker. We then have our chickens. I think you see the trend here. A thousand chickens per chicken coop. We have a thousand pigs. 
just food and water. No slurry here because, of course, it was just doing their business out in the middle of the open. We have a farm silo. We have a pull-through bunker. Another cow pasture for 1,000 cows. Milk, food, and water. We have bale storage. We're going to have then more beef. Two thousand sheep. We have our wool. We have our food there, and more horses. Sixteen more horses. Water and food. Now to the north, we're going to come across another farm. So we're going to have our cows, another feeding robot building. So 2000 cows here, mineral feed and seed silo, 500 bale and pallet storage, we have our food, another food or fuel, liquid tanker, we have our manure pit, our feeding robot there, sheep. 2,000 sheep again. And we have our farmhouse. We have our farm productions building there. And there we go. Let's make our way over here to Maypole. And we have our farmhouse and then coming in and around we have our fuel storage our farm silo 500 bales and pallets seed and mineral feed silo we have our manure heap we have our cows 2000 just imagine if you had all of these animal areas filled what it would take to keep up with all of them. So we have our solid silo. It's going to be another feeding robot set up. We have our sheep. And we have our pigs right here. So these aren't pigs. Sorry, these are chickens. 2,000 chickens. Their food. There were sheep, 2,000 sheep, pull through silage bunker, and then here we have our horses, 14 horses here, with our food trough. So there you go. If we make our way west, we're going to come over here to another farm. There's that pond that we can get rid of. So we have our sheep, we have our wool, we have our food, and we're going to find our animal here for two thousand liquid and solid fertilizer storage another sheep so more wool so this farm is going to offer four thousand sheep so far bale and pound storage Another horse area. Boop. 
Mineral feed and seed storage. We're gonna have a manure heap. We have our pigs, so we have our slurry, our food, we have our water, another 2,000 pigs. And there you go. Further west, we're going to come across another fairly large farm area here. Farm area is going to have horses. Pigs. To our slurry point. 2,000 pigs. We have a manure heap. We're going to have our chickens. Another 2,000 chickens. We have our food. We're going to have our eggs around the corner. We have bale and pallet storage. We have a farm silo. Then we have a three sided silage bunker here. We have solid and liquid fertilizer storage. We've got 2,000 sheep. We have another 2,000 cow building there because it's going to be a self feeder. And there you go. Another manure over here by the cows. Angle northeast past the biogas point to another farm set up. So it looks like it's set up with a dog house. So we have our farmhouse, we have our seed and mineral feed. No, it's going to be chickens. Another 2,000 chickens. Another 2,000 cow building. Bale and pallet storage. We have our solid fertilizer. We have our seed and mineral feed. Manure heap. We have our liquid fertilizer storage. We have our fuel point. We have another manure heap and another large cow building. So another 2,000 cows. We have our farm silo. And we'll make our way back here to our sheep for another 2,000 sheep. With the wool spawn trigger. So that's, that was a big farm. I think we had one of every animal there. Did we miss? We missed our horse. And then to the west, we're going to come across another farm. We were seed and fertilizer storage, and then seed and mineral feed storage. Farm silo. Our sheep. Two thousand sheep. Or diesel fuel. Solid fertilizer. 
Here we have our horses. Behind us we have our chickens. Another 2,000 chickens. We have our liquid fertilizer and then our little farmhouse trailer. Northwest for another farm. We're about done. We're about done with farms. We probably have maybe three or four more. We're gonna come into here. We have our manure heap right by our pigs. Two thousand pigs. Our farm silo. We have bale and pallet storage. We have our solid fertilizer storage tank. We have our min our slurry point. Liquid fertilizer storage. We have our slurry point. We have a cow feeding barn. We have our manure heap behind me. Two thousand cows again. With our milk trigger. Just up the road, we have our another farm. This is going to be, I believe, an arable farm. To inside here, we have some sheds. We have fuel point, liquid and solid fertilizer storage, and our farm silo. And that's it. Farmhouse is a little bit removed from a farm, located right there. There we have that building site I mentioned earlier. Seen that a few times. And let's make our way now down to Riverview. Then Riverview just has, I believe, three farms. With the main farm being here, Newbie Farm. Let's start here at the entryway. Into Newbie Farm. We can go up to the right to our cows. 1,000 cows because this is not a self feeding building. We have our milk. We have our manure heap. We have our slurry. Continue up. We have them farm productions. A large resided silage bunker. Huge bale shed. And our farm silo. Now we wait to make our way back down. To the entryway, we're going to have our seed and mineral feed silo there. We have our liquid silo. We have bale and pallet storage. Fuel. We have our solid fertilizer. We're going to have another thousand cows here with our milk. Feed and straw in the middle, slurry, manure heap. We have a chicken coop for 2,000 chickens with food. And what are you doing over here, bud? Where, where did you come from? I think you're supposed to be over there, dude. Don't know where you're coming from, but okay. All right, we'll we'll do that, right? And then we have our farmhouse. Oh, sorry about the trees. And there we go. Now 
Now the other two farms here on Riverview section of the map is going to be down here in the what would be the southeast corner. We do have a sheep pasture located right here that we did go ahead and buy. So we have 2,000 sheep with our food and our wool point. And these are the last two farm areas. We have some sheds here. We have a pig area. Manure heap and farm silo. So we have a slurry point. We have food and 2,000 pigs. Just on the other side of this ridge line, we have our last farm that we're going to talk about. But I want to come into it for more of the the entry point along the water's edge we're going to come straight down to a three-sided silage bunker through our farm silo to a manure heap we want to find our animals collected so we have 2,000 chickens we have 80 cows just 80 cows here quite conservative 2,000 pigs. Really standard triggers on all of those. Then we're gonna have horses. Our food and our sheep, 65 sheep. There you go. That is it. Man, that is a lot of farms. A whole lot of farms. Then we have one more building site up here. And here we want to take a look at our build mode. So let's jump to landscaping. Painting textures. We have some extended painting textures here. Lots of different dirts, lots of gravels. Fairly standard shrubbery and trees. We do have the ability to put down lots of different animal pins of various capacities, 1,000 and 2,000 and such and so forth. We should have the ability to put down some of these other productions, like the farm productions. And then we have a listing of all of the various sheds as well. So we can pretty much clean house and repopulate out the farms how we would like, still using the same general buildings that are available here on the map. Let's close this video out. Let's summarize the scoring that we're going to give this map with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such, of course. Yes, this map's getting a full point. There are 55 productions scattered around all four quadrants of this absolutely massive mega map, if you will. The ability to sell all our basin crops, animal outputs, and production points. Again, we're going to be giving the map a full point there because we do indeed have the ability to pretty much sell everything that you could possibly make on this map with respect to base game, premium, platinum, as well as farm production pack. So all of the paid DLCs that introduce 
new fill types and such. With respect to the farms being customizable, we are giving the map a full point there as well because we can sell everything at all the farms or if we can't sell it, we can simply cut down some light poles and we'll see the things that we can't sell vanish. So pretty much we can start from absolute scratch if we want to sell some buildings and clear out some light poles. The ability to get rid of these hedges on each farm by cutting that pole down at the BGA I think is a really cool feature because not everyone is keen on hedges with collisions. So being able to just quickly wipe the hedges away can really transform a map from being, nope, not going to play on it, to, yes, this map is outstanding. With respect to buildings where appropriately are using the new texturing technique as well as ground textures, this is where the map is going to lose just a little bit of points. And that is because we have at some of these farms, some of these older style buildings. And some of these older style buildings have been around for quite a while. And as such, they are more of a flat building texture. They don't super take away from the overall feel of your gameplay, but it is kind of noticeable when they are up close to other buildings that are using the more modern texturing technique. So we're gonna be getting the map three quarters of a point there. And then the last thing is going to be trigger and interactive areas clearly marked. I feel that in all respects, the interactive areas and triggers are indeed clearly marked on this map. And as such, we're going to give the map a full point there as well. So that's going to put this map with a final score of 4.75 out of 5, which I think is just absolutely monumental. Given the number of things that are on this map the number of triggers, the number of placeable cell points or placeables with respect to production items, the number of cell points that we have around the map as well. Like I said, this has been a monumental effort with Cavalier Roy or for Cavalier Roy in order to put all of this together. Let's also take a look real quick at our animal feed overview. Just seeing, looks like we have fairly standard animal food requirements across everything as well. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below with respect to combined counties. What do you think of this map? What do you think of this concept of taking four maps, mixing them and mashing them all together into one giant mega map? I think he's done a fabulous job because if you didn't know where one map met the next, you'd never have a clue. That basically, let's get here to the line. You would have no idea that the map to my left, it's Maple. The map to my right is Glen Lethan. And we're right here on the dividing line. You'd have no idea. He's done such a fabulous job in mixing it all together. And until next time, happy farming.